you just find yourself crying. You start crying. You don't know what you're asking for. You are just overwhelmed. Because you have received something that men can give. Is Hi, welcome back to this channel. Here's another powerful content from us, and we believe that you're going to be blessed by it. Please do to like and share this video. And if you're new to this channel, can you hit the subscribe button to stay updated on more powerful content like this? God bless you. I beat my body, I bring my body under subjection. He said, if we are able to purge ourselves, he said, then we are neat and suitable to be used for the master's name. What Paul is saying is that if you want to receive a high grading in the realm of life, you must be able to dominate your flesh. You must come to a point where you are not ruled by your feeling. You want to pray in the night. I'm not even talking about sin yet because if you are still at the level of sin, that means what we are talking about, you, you can't know it. I'm talking about men who are fighting. You know, the Bible said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable to his death that I may partake of his resurrection. So what Paul is saying is that in this life form, I'm able to tame my flesh and make my flesh to be powerless concerning my existence. When a man is able to attain that feat in the realm of God, he has moved in the class of life. He's not an ordinary man anymore. The things that happen to people who are ruled by their feeling can happen to him because he has stepped up. But you see, even though we are many, there are many who are ruled by their flesh. So when they, they, they come fast, when you say fast, after three hours, the alarm of flesh begins to shout. They now wake up and say, I will do this fasting tomorrow. After all, I'm just 19 years old. I still have a lot of time in this world. They carry the Bible to read. They doze off. Ah, Lord, help me, help me, help me. God will help you by showing you mercy. But you can't grow in the kingdom. Because kingdom is not for children. The heir, so long as it's a child, is not different from a servant. So what God will do is that he will give you deliverance. So you are traveling, you know, there's an accident. You say, thank you, Jesus. Hey, I survived. You can't be entrusted with the powers of a God because flesh still rule you. There are certain men that when they travel, they say we are the safety of the road. Those types don't pray to God for deliverance. They are the deliverance of this generation. There is a power. It's called the powers of the ages to come. It's the power of a God. See, the reason why when we preach, we are careful is because we are talking to different people. Somebody wakes up. He says, Lord, help me with my daily bread. That prayer was for children. Because God never taught his disciples about their daily bread. When he came to his disciples, he told them, go into all the world. Go and dominate the world. People like you don't pray for bread. They bring it to your feet. It's the power of a God. For such men, even if there is drought in the land for three and a half years, ravens will begin to look for them. God can employ ravens to get bread and find them wherever they are. God can afford to command a widow to give her last meal to that man. Because such men, they are not mortals. They have won, they have entered higher cadres of life. They know how to bring the flesh under subjection. Because a man who can tame the flesh crosses the threshold of mortality to immortality. The journey from mortality to immortality is the ability to rule over your senses. When you can tame your flesh, you have become a God man. Those are the kind of men that God is looking for. God is not looking for a large church. The glory of the king is in the multitude of the people. It's beautiful when we are many. But the men God wants to work with are the men that have power in this world. And one of the signs is that they have won the battle of flesh. If you read Romans chapter 12 from verse 20, Paul was telling us how, how much of victory he has over flesh. And one of the ways Paul described this is that he can't be offended. When you offend Paul, you can't get him to be offended. He has mastered anger. He has mastered, but we have a generation where even in pastor's meeting, what we talk is malice and gossip. That's why Paul says you are babes, you are carnal. You have not come into the realm of gods because you can't walk kingdom. If you can't dominate flesh, you can't walk where immortals walk. It's not about the vision you have or the dream you have or what God told you. What is the degree to which you rule your flesh? Because if you don't tame the flesh, even if Jesus appears to you today, you will still sabotage it. 
The insurance you will have to keep walking in the realm of access is the degree to which you tame the flesh. The reason we call people to fasting, to prayers, is because we want to teach them how to master their flesh. So when you start praying, you discover that it becomes difficult for you. I'm telling you, how we join into the gate of revival? The guy can enjoy praise and dance and dance and sweat. But when you change from praise to prayer, after a while he starts dozing off. The question I always ask myself is, how can a man sleep when people are praying so loud? Because sleep has no regard for volume. It's a law over the flesh. And when sleep binds a man, if you like put it in an engine room, it will sleep comfortably. Because he has no rule over the flesh. Have you not seen that even in a service like this, some people can be looking at somebody and forget themselves. All they are thinking of is how to meet that person after the service. They are slaves. We may be many, but there are few men that have mastered the flesh. So when God begins to rate men, one of the things he checks is, to what degree have you ruled your flesh? To what degree have you conquered your flesh? Because if you have not conquered your flesh, anything I give you is a waste. That's why I say, cast not holy things to the swine. They will go back to where they came from. The guy is still a slave of his appetite. I can't commit kingdom to him. He has not decimated flesh. He has not killed the powers of the flesh. God wants to give powers to a man to bring a city to her knees. But the least provocation, that man begins to render causes. So if God gives him that power, a man will kill all the children of God. There's no power over the flesh. That's why I say if a man is perfect, he has rule over his tongue. And in Matthew chapter 28 verse 43, he said, be a perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And in that kind of perfection, it has an implication on relational discipline. We are talking kingdom, organic reality. You know how to link with the Holy Spirit and for the Holy Ghost to mortify your flesh. So sometimes you will seek him in the closet. You will seek him in the secret. You will seek him everywhere because you don't want flesh to raise an ugly head. Because there's a journey you want to embark upon. There's a place I want to get to. Flesh is a limitation. Do you not know that even this preaching that we are preaching now can become the reason why flesh becomes strong? You come up, you exaggerate, you do all kinds of things to make people feel you are a certain man. God is wise. That's why the power of God is released when the gospel is simple. So that no man can take the glory and say, I'm a cherubim. That's why this happened. It is in the simplicity of the gospel that the power of God moves. Somebody becomes blessed. That's the reason the person falls. Because there's no victory over flesh. You can't ascend. You can't know revival. The flesh, we always cut it off. We always truncate it. Adam was in the midst of a revival. Every day the Bible said the, the voice of God came. The voice of God came. But flesh had not been overcome. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. The pride of life. Even though God was coming every day. Every day. The man didn't win flesh. He truncated revival. When a man is growing in life. His first victory is in the flesh. That's why when men become mature in God. They are not moved. You can come and sing. Everybody is falling. They are watching you. They saw the way you climbed the stage. They want to see the way you come down. Because when you climbed the stage, you were moving with fear. Hoping that God will help you. Now that God has helped you, you want to come down from the stage. You now stand like this and say, I want to proclaim the blessings of God over you. The person who came like a lamb, because God is now moving, is like this. So when they check you, they know you will not go far. The anointing moves, but you are still a slave of flesh. You are still a slave. Sometimes when fathers are listening to you, your revelation may be cutting edge, but they are seeing your disposition. And the moment people start clapping, you begin to walk like this. You begin to proclaim. They now say, okay, this is a servant of flesh. They will wait and give you five years. After five years, they will look for you again. Is that boy still talking? When they see you after five years, they still check. A flesh is not dealt with, they will leave you. Because they know it's a wasted investment when you invest in the flesh. The flesh will always perish. It will always suffer corruption. So when God wants to entrust powers to a generation, he begins to check the parameters of the flesh. The day you call somebody's name and phone number, that day everything is about to change. There's a way you now stand. <laughs> I'm showing you the things you watch out for. I know now you can pray for seven hours. But if you're not careful, seven hours prayer will be the reason why you will lose your place. Because once upon a time, when you were only able to pray for 20 minutes, you came to the place of prayer, trusting God to help you. Now you have become a prayer champion. So you will not even pray. You'll be strolling at the back, waiting for when they'll give you a microphone. Because everything they are doing now, they are joking. Until you climb the altar. Then they will see what prayer, what prayer is. You are a clanging simba. And the guy comes. Even when they give you the microphone, he believes himself so much. 
It will first of all kill the atmosphere. I say, wait, wait. When we begin to pray, <laughs> all that flow is for prayer. He wants to talk to God. Oh. You want to talk to an eternal oracle, an endless oracle, an immortal that even cherubims can't stand before. And then you are like this. <laughs> when the cherubims that guard the presence show up in that meeting, you are the first they will strike. Because they carry the jealousy of God as a body. The reason we are small is because we have not one flesh. People are praying and God is telling them, go back. There is a tyrant in your life that I must stay. That tyrant is that ancient enemy, the flesh. The flesh lost it against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and the two one to another. When revival comes, men must rule over flesh. Number two, men must win over the world. The world can make a slave of you. That's why I say men are concerned about the things of this life. When you get to Lagos, like my brother who came from Lagos, we love ourselves so much. There's a way they live in Lagos. It's natural for you to tie your integrity and put it in the, in the box before you go out. Because if you carry your integrity, you are already doomed. Because in Lagos, it's not lying is part of the process. So many pastors that are in Lagos are businessmen. They don't know Jesus Christ. When you come around them, everything about them is politics. Five minutes of charge, they will use politics to win everybody's favor first. And then the next thing they will begin to exaggerate and hype is a natural thing in Lagos. It's a natural thing. Because your environment can make you a slave. Even though God calls you into the army of God, separates you from Egypt, you see all the miracles. You can still carry Egypt in your heart. Because what the world does is that it enslaves you. The flesh wants to dethrone you from your throne as a God. The world wants to kill the love of God in your life. So that it will replace it with the love for things. And even though things are necessary, your pursuit is not things. It says seek first the kingdom and all these things shall be added. But when the world comes, the world wants you to seek things. And because of things, you can compromise on your relationship with God any day, any time. And then you will think you are making progress because the world will make you think that progress is based on the natural things around you. Last month we were 10. Now we are 2,000. The Lord is good. <laughs> you didn't make progress because your number increased. You make progress because the level of God that is entrusted to you have increased. God will entrust himself more to you. More, more, more. When God entrusts himself to you, the number will increase. But you also need to know that the number, the number can increase without God entrusting himself to you. Because if you begin to pursue number, you can begin to deploy strategies that will make the number grow, but God will not grow in you. So the world will put you under pressure for you to use natural parameters to judge your success. And by the time you start doing it, you will discover that when you arrive at your destination, your destination will not be Zion. It will be called Babylon. Because Babylon's focus is greatness. Babylon, the great. You will end at greatness, but it will be greatness in the flesh, not with God. So even though the things of this life are important, we don't pursue them. Because the verdict of the spirit realm is that the things of life should be an addition. So even though cloud is important, it's an addition. Finances are important, they are an addition. Our pursuit is God, the presence, access to his realm. And if we stay accurate, he has already said, I've not called the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. I know the things you are looking for. He said the things the pagans are desperately looking for will be added to you. Don't pursue those things. It's a gimmick of the world. And then the spirit of this life or the spirit of this age, they will come to blind you. When flesh wins you, the world dominates you, you become blinded. So even in error, you will be proud. When they want to correct you, you will, me, who is the person? Is this person, this is the person you, you don't hear anymore. So even though you are diabolic, you go and join bishops and carry a long tie, a long chain, and then you come for the meeting like this. Because that you came with a Prado jeep doesn't mean you have stature. It's only those who are blinded that don't see. We see beyond the Prado jeep. If you like, buy a Prado jeep and carry a long cross on your neck. We see beyond the cross. Because we know him that dwells in the midst of the coals of fire. And any man who has been purged, when he appears, we can sense the aroma of God like a fragrance from him. When you see a man of God talking, you don't need, even if he doesn't quote the Bible, you can perceive the aroma 
because the spirit that he mingles with will follow him out as a token of their intimacy. When the spirit wants to validate you, there is a token he gives to you. When you come out of the secret place, he will come with you like a fragrance. The demons know it. That's why when Jesus came from the mountain, he came into the synagogue. The Pharisees could not discern him, but demons began to scream. Why have you come before your time? There's a token that he came with. When a man of God comes, a man that does business with the oracles of God's spirit, when he enters a place, there's an aroma he carries. And every man of discernment will know him. We are not moved by long garments. We are moved by the coverings of the presence. What is the aroma you came with? We can perceive it. We can perceive it because we pursue the presence. So if you carry it, we may know. Without due respect, we don't rank you based on your cross. What is the waters you deal with? Where are the places you are summoned to? What is the witness you can bring to your generation? You just come and stand and say, the Lord has blessed me. What is the blessing? Is it the car you are driving? I've left that level. That's a mundane realm. Because Mark Zuckerberg doesn't need God to buy that car. That's a mundane realm. Is it because you flew to the meeting with a private jet and not moved by it? There is a realm where men don't travel by means. They go by the wind. I have gone to places before where men communicate at the frequency of thought. I've been coming to places before where men travel by the wind. So I'm not moved whether you came with a Lincoln Navigator. I want to find out what is the entourage that came with you. Can I perceive the presence of angelic beings? What is the fragrance of God you carry? And when you speak, what is the witness that you have for your generation? I can find stature in a man. A man that travels in the spirit, he has an aroma. The same way you carry a perfume, he carries it. But when a generation is blinded, they rate men by what they have. And everything we call blessing is mundane. That's why we can't change our world. Because most of the kings of this world, they have what you are looking for in excess. So what is the gospel you have for them? If your God only blesses men with car, then they don't need your God. Because without your God, they have more than enough. I read of a, pre, a king, the king, I think of someone, something, republic, that has over 35 Rolls Royce. In his house, every day, a Rolls Royce is packed on in case he steps out by emergency. His cars alone are worth more than $5 billion. So you come to such a, a king and you say, God bless this man with things. He will look at you. He will say, call your God. I want to help him. I have more than enough. When we talk about rank in the spirit, we find out what is the level of access you have. If men are confused now, can you talk to your God and he brings direction? If a generation is walking in iniquity, can your God bring witness sufficient to orchestrate repentance so that your generation can have a heritage in the world to come? What do you carry? You cannot walk in those corridors until you have been able to win the war over the princes of this world. They come to blind men. They come to dark, to darken the understanding of men. So instead of pursuing things that are eternal, we pursue earthly things. And it's a cycle of vanity and vexation of spirit. But we cannot tell. When the spirit of revival comes, it manifests in threefold. The first way the spirit of revival manifests is in the knowledge of God. I know about prayer. I know about martyrdom. But the first expression of the spirit of revival is that men will come into the economy of the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God is not information. It is experience. Every man will begin to experience God for himself. You can no longer talk to men about God. They know the God you are talking about. So all of us have experiential knowledge of God. And that is why God calls knowledge life. He said this is life eternal. That you may know him the only true God and him whom he has sent. When we enter into the experiential knowledge of God, deception will die. And the knowledge of God will become an, a drawing force in our spirit. Because the way this knowledge works is that it doesn't get accumulated in your mind. It eats up your soul. So the more you know a spirit, the more you want to know him. The more you know a spirit, the more you want to know him. This is why the beings of the throne room, they are never dissatisfied. The Bible said the four beasts, day and night, forever and ever, without ceasing, they kept crying, holy is the Lord. The first day I read that scripture, I said, day and night, forever and ever. Don't they need rest? And now realize that rest is not relaxation. Rest is to be trapped in the center of God's will and to continually experience his presence. These men are in the loudest rest you can think of because every time they look upon him, they bask in that presence. And that presence improves the quality of their beings and they give out the glory of God as an aroma because the knowledge of God, they are saturated with it. When the spirit of revival engulfs the generation, men will know God. 
the laws of God will be written on their heart. This is why men will begin to fear the Lord. Because you don't need to come and read to them the laws of Moses. The presence of God in itself will become a government over them. A generation is coming that will be baptized with the spirit of revival. That when we stand, when we walk, when we sit, the only thing that will motivate us will be intimacy with God. Because we will want more and more of Him. Jesus said, The zeal of my father's house have consumed me. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. The reason is because he came there all the time and he beheld God. And every time he looks upon his eternal majesty, there is something that happens on his inside because every time God shows up, he glows in different dimensions. So one time you see the mercy of God and you are broken down crying. Lord, I don't deserve this. How can you show so much mercy? But it is a knowledge you are interacting with. Another time, the love of God will engulf you. And that love of God will flow in your spirit like liquid. It will be so intense. It will attract you. It, see, the love of God is what will make you forget about the offense of men. Because there is something happening within you. It's so tangible that you cannot afford to keep malice with another man. You are overwhelmed. You are overwhelmed. He pours himself upon you like an ocean. And the point comes when the love of God becomes too heavy. Why in your room praying? You just find yourself crying. You start crying. You don't know what you're asking for. You are just overwhelmed. Because you have received something that men can give. It's Many times, men will reject you. But you have something that men can't take from you. It's the love of God. Many times, ministry will fail. Men will write you off. But you have found the love of God. The Bible said it passes knowledge. You can't teach it. You can't communicate it. It's a liquid fire that flows in your spirit. Nothing moves you anymore. You have found the God that dwells in the deep dark. Talk to the Lord. Thanks for watching. We believe that you've been blessed by this powerful content. Please do well to like and tell us how this video has blessed you in the comment section below. And do not forget to subscribe to this channel to stay updated for more powerful content like this. God bless you.